Now it is time to play. Now it is time to play. All right, everyone, for yet another Netflix, where we watch movies on Netflix and we review them. There's the good, the bad, the what now, and the hidden gems. Today, I'm joined, as always, by the other John Carter. What's up? And uh, other John, he's just going to show up randomly in the middle of this podcast. It's going to be fun, so look out for that coming up. Today, we watched the movie that I would consider promising at best. And it was called The Diabolical. Now, this movie came out August 13, 2015. It has a runtime of 86 minutes. Directed by Alistair Legrand. It's a good name to pronounce. Who's done other movies than this. Not really. One of his movies was called The Clinical, which is actually coming out in 2017. So this is kind of a newcomer to the directorial horror world. All right. So a quick rundown of what the movie's about before we get into it. And then we will start ripping it apart or... Building it up. I guess we're going to find out. So, a single mother and her children are awoken nightly by an intense presence. She asks her scientist boyfriend to destroy the violent spirit that paranormal experts are too frightened to take on. Now, that sounds like every other horror movie about ghosts or spirits you've ever watched. Yeah. It's like you're going to, ultimately, you're going to have someone come in who's going to do research on the house. They're going to set up cameras and they're going to try to capture it. I expected it to be sort of like The Conjuring, where these right. people were going to come in. There was going to be all this research. It was going to be really, yeah. you know, <laughs> great. And like the synopsis of the movie, the girl asks her boyfriend to research. I mean, that's like three quarters of the, way the movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and does she really ask him as much as he just kind of does it? Yeah, he know. just sort of magically has all of this <laughs> gear and then is like, we're going to do some research. And the research consists of one one scene one scene <laughs> yeah all right so this movie has ali larder now she's a final destination varsity <laughs> blues heroes and resident evil fame i was kind of surprised to see her so i was kind of like oh shit this may be a good movie yeah and dawson's creek i think yes too. yeah, yeah. Mm. so she's she's in good things historically <laughs> so it, it was like again going in i'm like oh man here we go we're gonna have that good one i've been waiting for it and here it comes yeah i mean typically she's in stuff that's you know not half bad Right. <laughs> so, all right. So let's get, let's get into the run by run. This is going to be our traditional way of going through the movie. Uh, I have a bunch of notes. I'm obsessive about taking notes as I watch the movies. Almost make it unfun to actually do because it's so stressful that I have to take notes the whole way. Um, all right. So here we go. This opens what I consider strong with Allie Larder, who's playing the character Madison. Um, she's all scared like in her house and she's followed by a gummy pulling off face monster. I don't know if you remember the very first scene. It's like she's hanging out and this this demon comes out and he starts ripping his own face off. Yeah. And I remember like when she's sitting there at the computer or she's like sitting in front of a bunch of bills and she sees this whole like she's Googling like, what do you do for bankruptcy? And she's asleep. <laughs> and then her like pin goes pulling off of the counter uh-huh. and she like very unconvincingly startling wakes up <laughs> and here's a bump and then goes, oh, no, not again. Right. right. <laughs> Here's my best acting chops. Not again. And then we jump to our credits. But to, to be fair, for most of the movies we watch, that is a fairly good opening scene. At least there was something happening, unlike the one with the wolves where it was like a flashlight flicking around the dark. Like, at least this had something. Yeah, I was a little disappointed that we saw more or less the monster almost right, right away in the movie. <laughs> I like didn't even try and hide him. It was, yeah. you know, it wasn't even like, oh, you know, you sort of see portions of him and later in the movie, uh, the monster. We know you get a full frontal on this dude. And that's one of the right good away. things about it is it's apparently three different monsters. But I don't know that I ever fully understood like the difference between the three. Yeah. So there was the there's a full form monster that stands up and he does the face ripping thing. And then there's the, he hates his face. He yeah. just hates his face. Then there's a crawling on the floor, bloody messed up looking one. Paralyzed and then with. there's the 
trying to come through walls one. Right. Which I think we only see that one twice. Yeah, that's like the Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's always pushing his face up against walls. Yeah, very Stranger Things where, like, the face yeah. <laughs> starts to push through the wall, like you know, kind of, yeah. So after the opening scenes, we see what appears to be a paranormal researcher whose name is Miguel, which is, this is the only time we see him in the movie. But it was apparently enough for them to list him in the credits. Anyway, you see Miguel doing uh, a sound scan for the paranormal activity, and there's this, apparently a spooky loud door. It's like, he's doing this little... He's, he has a little handheld recorder thing. He's like walking around the room. And then for no reason, they don't show the monster. They just show like a picture or the, the camera stops on a door and it's just like, bang. like, oh no, spooky door. But yeah. You- and he's listening really intently. And the girl's like, <laughs> Miguel, Miguel. And he's like, shut the fuck up. There's a door. <laughs> I'm trying to listen. <laughs> and you she's like, me. Miguel, you're scaring me. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Um, and speaking of which, these paranormal researchers in the movies, uh, it's always the same trope where it's like some nerdy dude comes in, he has his headset on, he's holding a hand recorder, and he's like scanning around a room. Like, is that even a real thing other than existing in movies? Does that job exist in the real world? Have you ever heard about that? I don't, I, I don't know. No, I don't think it does. I think this is literally a job that was made up for movies. It's a movie job. It's a movie job. I wouldn't mind this job because I don't personally in my real life believe in ghosts. It's not like a thing I've... I think exist, and I don't like. I don't believe in aliens. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in like religious stuff. Like so, to me, this is all like I could easily do that job because I could just be like, "Well, this is another bullshit day. Where I'm just gonna walk around and pretend like some shit's here." <laughs> like, have you ever had an experience, paranormal experience yourself? No, 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 not that I can think. No of. No one has. Only time people have a paranormal experience is when they're like, "Oh, when I was a little kid, this happened." No, you were a little kid and you're stupid. You didn't realize what was happening. You didn't really have a paranormal experience. Yeah, that's my theory, anyways. Yeah, my only thing with this guy is he's supposedly a paranormal researcher. And okay, let's say fake movie paranormal researcher yes. job exists. It's at least thirty k a year. You have spent the last however many years walking around and record listening in houses and nothing happens, and you finally find the one where there is your gonna get all scared and run away (laughs) and she's like you screaming after them what did you see what did you know tell me what you know and they're just like we're out of here bitch (laughs) they like (laughs) jump in the truck and they're yeah he like out of here as soon as that scene's over he bails out of the house just as uh madison's children are returning home from school and and it's like at this point in the movie you realize the kids know some shit's going on in the house so this movie doesn't bury the lead everyone knows all these all of our main characters know there is something going on in the house that's paranormal which again i find that refreshing yeah i mean in most scary movies where there's kids the kids are pretty you know they don't know Mm -hmm. you know i mean i guess in the conjuring they eventually figure it out because you know there's no way that they wouldn't stuff like that but you know in a lot of them though the kids just kind of along for the ride Mm -hmm. they don't really mentally understand but in this one the son is maybe like middle school age the daughter's younger elementary school age they very clearly know that these things appear like that they're scary you know the little girl talks to the stand-up one (laughs) you know so and not even in a scary way she just talks to him well (laughs) she thinks it's her like dead dad yeah, which they never explain like really what happened to the pleasure. dad. They yeah. just say that he's gone. He was apparently like mentally abusive. Yeah, and I was confused at the beginning because the kid apparently is like violent or something, or something right. happened that we don't know. We find out later. Yeah, and then the dad is missing, and in my head, I'm like, the kid killed the dad or something. <laughs> and of course, later on, they don't explain what happened to the dad, but all that happened is the kid beat another kid up is right that's actually the scene right after this the kid uh the son's name is jacob and right after they get home from school like the social worker is like just on time to show up as she shows up she's talking about how like apparently jacob hurt someone six months ago but apparently he doesn't remember what happened yeah i think it was just one of those situations where he got really really angry and it just you know the anger takes over and you beat the crap out of a kid and then later you're like Maybe he doesn't not remember, mm-hmm. but he doesn't remember being like, I'm going to beat you unconscious, <laughs> you know, yeah. but he just remembers, you know, I was really angry and stuff happened. I wrote a note saying, I'm sure we'll find out what happened soon, but no, we don't really, no, not mm-hmm. really. Yeah. There's no explanation to that. It's way later. Come on in. Come on in. It's open. Housekeeping. Hello? Hi. 
John's here. He's late. We're running in. We've only got in like 10 minutes, so you're not too bad. Yeah. I'll have you know it took me an hour to get here. Uh, traffic. Wow. An hour from here. Jesus. That's my life. Yeah, it took me 20 minutes to get here from the farmer's market. I, mean, I had to like stand that. up. <laughs> Your mic's over there. I got I got three mics going on today. You are amazing. Yeah. We all get our own seats today. Oh, that's right. Ow. Oh, you put me next to the vent, dude. All right, so everyone, we're joined by... We're, we are lucky enough to be joined by the John, the Skinner, the Skinner John, the Skinny John. I, I took... I, I passed off on so many huge events for this that's today. That's right. We are lucky to be graced by his presence. You're welcome. <laughs> now... So, John, we've made it through to a very, very important plot point in the movie. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we're going to have you jump in for this. This is just after the social worker leaves the house telling um, Allie Larder, which was her name was Madison. So yeah. this is where we see Allie Larder being left by the social worker, and she's telling her, like, she needs to get a shit in order with her kid or potentially something's going to happen. They don't really tell you exactly what it's about. And we are visited by... Nicola, which is the love interest of the movie. He's actually a teacher at the school that Jacob goes to. And this is where he learns this very specific lesson about physics, that you don't throw eggs at walls. No. We all know that. No, you throw them at bed sheets. <laughs> yeah. It's very important. <laughs> it's like, what was the kid learning to not throw eggs at a wall? Like, how dumb is this fucking kid where like, ooh, don't throw it at the actual wall. You throw it at like a I bet. Well, see, he's getting ready for ninth grade, dog. Mm, yeah, so grade. it was a paradox. Yes. Because this is the s- dumbest physics lesson <laughs> I've ever heard. But I don't he's know, like I a in, super genius. When I was in ninth grade, I was probably learning some dumb shit. But well, yeah. well that that uh, the egg situation actually comes back up not very much longer in the movie. We right. learn we learn how to throw an egg, and then we get to see someone. Is egg. this foreshadowing? I, I feel like that's what they call it. It's foreshadowing. Yeah, it's, this it's, is some really crappy foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, it's it's a uh, three shadowing, but so a good solid three and a half. Shadowing. Yeah. Um, then we jump over to in the middle of the night. Jacob goes downstairs to make a sandwich. By by the way. First of all, okay, so there's two things to this. Have you ever gotten up in the middle of the night and made a sandwich? You grab something easy. You don't yeah. make, make a dinner. Well, like he rolls no. over in his bed and is like, you know, grabs his tummy like he has an upset tummy. I think he's going to like Well, that's poop acting. Poop he's or like, something. he's showing like hunger. This is where hunger exists in my body. <laughs> it's my stomach. Yeah. And of course he like opens a drawer in his bedside table and a, no chips. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So now I have to go downstairs and make the worst looking peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> And speaking of which, like, okay, so I understand if you're like a 30 something year old, you get hungry in the middle of the night, you know, you're living paycheck to paycheck, you make yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But as a kid, you're making a fucking sandwich in the middle of the night. No, yeah. you're grabbing chips, you're grabbing meth, you're cooking up, yep. you're dealing drugs. This you is what you do in the middle of the real night. Real shit, man. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can live- play some video games, see some Cheerios. <laughs> And at that time, the monsters are down there just chilling. And they're time-stopping monsters. This is the first we realize that these these ghosts, these paranormal spirits, they can stop time. And I don't know if that's ever really addressed again in the movie. Do you remember? Sort of. It's, um, do we want to go ahead and I mean, spoil the whole movie? Yeah, I mean, spoiler the alert, end? there is some timey shit going on. Yeah, spoiler alert, there's time travel stuff happening. And it was real loosely handled, I thought. Yeah. It's yeah. a little weird. And I think that the... Like time space freezing. Cause, like, in this particular scene, you're watching water drip from the faucet and then the water falls and, <laughs> you know, st- yeah, <laughs> stops. And then you see like the flash of light and then the kid's like, oh, fuck. And like, looks, peek, goes and peeks around the corner and there's the bloody crawling one. Crawly guy. Yeah. Like, why can't that dude get up? You know? Is he just lazy? What's his deal. You know? I don't know. He, he's living off the system. I think yeah. he got splinched in the middle of, of time traveling and cut him in half. Lazy, bloody fuck. <laughs> um, but, um, but apparently all you have to do is say, this will go away. And it does. Yeah. Eventually they boop and light flash and they're gone. You just hope real hard. Yeah. Just please, 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 please. And they're gone. <laughs> There's no Ghostbusters. Necess- this is what they should have done Ghostbusters. All they right? had to do is deploy the Ghostbusters to a place and just be like, please go away. Yeah. And the ghosts are gone. Hey, do you mind? We're uh, we're doing stuff here. <laughs> yeah, and like it's unfortunate too because they're not the time travel busters. The time, the time travel busters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then we go on to learn that Jacob and Haley, which are the two children, and by the way, Haley 
was in Jurassic World. No shit. Was she really? She was. I think she was the girl that was like doing something and looked up and like the pterodactyl things were flying over. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember Wait, which, that part. Wait, which one was first? What year was this movie? I didn't look. Uh, this was 2015. So I, this was probably made after Jurassic Park, I would mm. imagine. Okay. Hey, you can't win them all, man. You can't. Well, she can. She's doing great. She's doing way better than we've ever done with our lives. Uh, well, that's yeah. true. Well, I mean, <laughs> she true. went from girl that looks up at, you know, ter- ter- pterodactyls ter- that don't <laughs> exist to, you know, third main character in a scary I'll movie. I'll be honest. I didn't watch Jurassic World. No? So I don't even know. It was, it was okay. That was, uh, that was literally the first movie that me and my lady went and saw. No kidding. That's, that was our that was our first date. It was Jurassic World. Man, that's so Oh, sweet. you must have hated it. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> <laughs> because I was with her or <laughs> No, because you guys are still together. There's some statistic that says if yeah. you go watch a movie and oh, the yeah, you two John. collectively hate it, you bond more. I've the, heard that. The other John told us about this on something. Yeah. He was like, I hope everyone has a shitty time watching their first movie together. <laughs> yeah, I did say that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. You, th- you three shadowed. Wow. Look at that. Three shadow. But yeah, no. We're I'm, the only ones that close the loops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you close your own loop and then you disappear. Um, but yeah, no, I actually love Jurassic World as a little side tangent. But um, so, anyways, after the ghost or the spirit or whatever the fuck we're considering them, what are we considering these? Are they ghosts, the spirits, the demons? What is it? Well, they're, they're actually just people. They're just people. Then why do they look like shit and monsters? Like, why I, are they. Well, like I said, I think he got splinched. Like, the whole thing is there's this weird tech company that's trying to experiment with. Um, teleportation and they're accidentally time traveling these people and they're called camset camset they're not handling the travel well they're yeah it's a rough road they're getting their right. legs cut off and their skin peeled off during the failed teleportation is that what's happening is that yeah. like legit what's happening yeah 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 oh, okay i missed yeah. that i know i just had to context clues the shit out of that they never because only one of them made it through unscathed and they said before they were like oh he handles pretty much everything we throw at him pretty well Mm. yeah and and supposedly he's brain dead they think but he's not because every time they send him back he's trying to murder them he's he's brain impaired they've done something to this guy we call them slow in the brain yeah (laughs) He's got a little brain slow joint. (laughs) Brain slow. He's trying. (laughs) I know words. Um, But anyways, I I then have a LOL, which uh, as I'm reading these notes, I enjoy enjoy the notes because I don't know necessarily what they're going to say because I write them as I'm watching the movie. And I have no idea as I'm reading them back what it's about to say. So let's let's enjoy. So LOL, Jake then says he will sell his comics to help them move. Oh, yeah. I mean, why? Like that? Like, how fucking expensive are these comics? Because right. they want to get out of this house. He's like telling his mom, like, please, let's move. And his mom's like, we don't have the money, we don't have the money. And he's like, I'll sell my comics if it helps. You, well, don't, you don't have issue one of Spider-Man. I was going to say. First if you got appearance of the ones, Punisher, maybe? <laughs> say what? First appearance of the Punisher. Oh, right. <laughs> right? Yeah, you got, some, you got some first editions and stuff like that. You might be shelling out, you know, but... Are they graded? He may just be <laughs> like a dumb kid who <laughs> thinks like, I got $5, let's buy a new house. Right, he's not stupid. He, he's at least, all, he at least understands the physics of eggs, so you would think you would know about finances. He's in finances. ninth grade. This dude is top of the, of the list, man. Yeah, they even said like how he's advanced further than other children. He's going to be skipping a grade or two. Right. So apparently they need to push him back a little bit because he thinks that comics can be sold to save a house. Either that or this dude's a, a comic collecting sleeper. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got all the things we want. Well, you know, this is actually the second movie where the bank has offered them way too much money for their house, and they right. still don't do still it. Don't. Well, this one, to be fair, they wanted <laughs> to buy the house because it was like the past of this cam set people that were running this time travel thing. They wanted to buy this property so that they could then initially set up the place to be a place to go back and forth through in time. So that's kind of why they really wanted it. And I don't think they ever explained why this particular place. I was going to say, why this Yeah, house? they didn't explain that either. Like, why couldn't they have just tried to teleport them to anywhere else? Well, okay, so this is one of the fun things. for Time travel movies are my favorite genre. If I had to pick, like, a very specific subset of movies, it'd be time travel. Like, I think my favorite one is Primer. Have you ever guys ever seen that? Nope. Mm-mm. But I know that the film adaption of The Time Machine, yeah. I it's, hated uh, it. What? It's awful. It's, it wasn't as good as the book, but Guy Pierce is a boss. You know the best thing about the movie was that I had to fucking read it because books are stupid. No, it was way better than the book. <laughs> no, the book was amazing. <laughs> the book and the, the book movie was, was not even close to Was that C.S. The, Lewis? Yeah. No, it was H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells. It's yeah, not yeah, even yeah. close to the same story. They diverge so much. I'm okay with it. it had Guy Pierce in it. 
I think that's his name. Jeremy right? Irons is in it too, like man. It. Jeremy Irons is a he's a boss too. I actually love the Time Machine for what it's worth. I know it's not a great movie. I don't. I'm not going to argue that it was a great movie. No, I loved it. I but thought it, it was great. I enjoy watching. I can watch that like once a year. I own it. Yeah, I own it too. Yeah, yeah. I watch it. I have, I touch myself to it. You know, everything we all oh, do yeah. to those movies. But anyways, I would recommend anyone anyone listening to this and the Johns also go watch Primer. It's on Netflix. Okay. It's a low budget horror movie, uh, a time travel movie. But the people that wrote that movie actually ended up, because that movie was so well done, and like they do the science behind how time travel would actually work, that it's loved by everyone. And then they went on, because of that, to be able to write the script for Looper. Oh, so, I like Looper. So the people behind Looper. Looper's great. So if you like Looper, that's just a big budget version of one of their ideas. Now, is this movie anything like Back to the Future? Because I love that one. That was a good one. We got to go back. I love that doc. I want to go to the future, but I want to go back to it. I want to no. go back to it. No, oh, how does he do his? Uh, how does he do that? What's the accent? Uh, what's the kid's name in that movie? Marty. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's my accent for Marty. That's good for a doc. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, this is a long ways to get to. I love time travel stories. I think they're the most interesting. And one of the things I might go on a rant here. So in time travel movies, you. If something potentially was going to happen, then it has already happened. That's kind of the physics behind time travel. Right. Like, if human society eventually one day will make a time machine, even if it's a million years from now, then we already have time travel happening. Because if right. it's going to eventually happen, it's already happening now. And that blows my mind. It's amazing to think about. And the biggest trope that I don't like about time travel stories is the magical time traveling and what i mean by that is example for example in the movie looper which i think is a great movie but in that if someone travels back in time and then in the past they get their arms chopped off then they're going to slowly start losing their limbs in their current time stream does that make sense so yeah. if i go back to 20 years ago and then someone cuts off my legs in the future then my past self is going to lose his legs and arms or vice versa if someone goes back in time and cuts off my arm in the past, me now is going to just magically lose my arm. Right. Because it's trying to connect the time streams right. to make it all make sense. I think that's bullshit. I don't think that's how it would work. I'll no, just, no. It's total bullshit. That's magic. That's not... That's yeah. that's It's taking something that is very scientific, at least in thought process, and turning it into something that's magical. What I think would happen if you did happen to skip time and space is you'd be creating your a different... Like timeline altogether. Yeah, you, yeah. you'd be crazy. It's the a, multiple universe theory, or right. whatever it's called. Yeah, like if you were to go back in time and see yourself, right, and cut your own leg off, you know, just I right. don't know, being ridiculous. How dare I don't you? Think that's crazy. That, yeah, I don't think that your <laughs> leg would just uh, like the future you that's gone back in time. His leg would just go boop and right. like magically disappear. Yeah, because that no, person, because that person didn't have their leg chopped off. So in how their could they have gotten there in the first place? There's now a separate timeline where he doesn't have a leg. Time is like an infinite plane, so it like multiplies as we progress through it. So I guess there would be like you could potentially have an infinite number of different. Right. You know, you know how the thing goes. Right. They say every moment has an infinite number of possibilities, and so that just kind of exponentially goes outwards. Right. Like every moment, there is every possibility that could have happened, did happen, and will happen just in a different parallel. So theoretically, place. there's an infinite number of us's. Right. Which uh, yeah, one where I didn't come here, I continued to nap. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that one, he's very grumpy. <laughs> Much less than he is right now. <laughs> one where this, one where this whole thing right here is phenomenal, and, and you're not here. then there's this one. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So time travel, it's great. This movie does not do the greatest job of explaining it. But what I guess again, I'm like tangenting today. So the whole way, the reason I got there is that I guess they needed that particular house because in the future, that's the house that they go to, or at least the place that they're sent back to. And so therefore, they have to like continue that loop. So therefore, you have to attain their original place that is being sent to from the future. Whew. Right. It's, yeah. it's, I, don't, I don't understand why that house though. It's got good walls. Yeah, it's got, and it's got... It's got good bones, man. It's good, uh, you know. It, it, the property value is coming up in that neighborhood, and they just yeah. realize that, and they're, just, they're, you know, funny. It's going to be a Walmart eventually anyway. Well, we all will. I'll be a Walmart one day. Sure. <laughs> we'll see why not. That makes sense. That's yeah. how science works. Yeah. Well, another huge spoiler is it's a little bit too convenient that we eventually find out that the full guy that comes back is the kid. 
Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't ever know this. Yeah, dude. I think yeah. I started tuning out towards. The yeah. Very so end. at the very end of the movie, when the guy is like, you know, the guy has like messed up the boyfriend and stabbed the mom and is like trying to like kill everybody and whatever, he comes down and we actually have one of these exact type situations happen. He comes down into the basement and he goes to kill the kid and the kid like pulls his head back and he only catches him on the cheek. And so he cuts him up the face. And so as the guy turns towards Magic. the mom, it, this little blue light goes up his cheek and creates this scar. And so the mom is like, you know, you. he has one of those, uh, you know. And so to me, I was just like, that's a little too convenient. Yeah, because that he's that traveling happens. back in time to his own house. Before yeah, that happens, he's, he's looking at like the volcano, and he's looking at the stuff over on the wall. Yeah, and he like stops, like, and he looks all sentimental. And wait, like, does he is collaborate and listen dad? to that? Does he what? You say he stops. Yeah, he's like. Does he collaborate the- and listen? Is what I'm asking. Oh, oh. I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, he Damn. doesn't take enough time to collaborate or listen. No, but Damn. he does go cut his own face. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I don't know so, how he wouldn't recognize, if he recognizes the volcano, how does he not recognize himself? Well, my only question, yeah, which they totally don't answer, was, is he trying to, like, change the past somehow or kill himself so that he doesn't end up? Because basically the whole thing that they try and explain was something happens to the mom, totally un- something happens to the mom, totally unexplained. Mm-hmm. The kid goes all whatever, nutso. And tries to bomb the camshaft building. Cam oh, wow. sh- camshaft, yeah, 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 that's their official. Name. And it. they I capture him and spend forty years doing shit to him, and you know, fucking him up. And then now he's coming back in time, and when he gets back, he keeps trying to kill the family. Did you like read the book? I missed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I laid in bed and actually watched the yeah, movie. Right. I was He's like, the only one that actually watched this movie, <laughs> for the record. No, I just, like, I mean, there was a lot of scenes that were pretty boring. I had to try sort of hard to con- to maintain. Wow. I mean, attention. I literally only tuned out probably the last 10 minutes because I was like, oh, my God. Well, this was another one of those exposition situations. Oh, They're kind of data, data dump. dumping you. Yeah. So I'll, almost all of this is the last, like, 10 minutes. So you'd recommend, if you're going to watch this movie, really just watch the last, like, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, watch the first 10 minutes so you can figure out who the characters are and kind of what's going on and then just skip to the very end. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely happen- happenstance or what you have. Uh, serendipitous again the what you're saying like why is he going back in time why does it why does it happen that this kid grown up 40 years in the future is coming back to this house because he's yeah. not choosing to be sent he's like being sent yeah they're sending him back it's just a little too convenient that it just happens to be him and they just happen to be sending him back to his childhood home and he doesn't recognize it he doesn't know he forgot all about his yeah. science fair who the yeah. fuck are these people <gasps> Bobby, damn it, Bobby! <laughs> oh, Butterfree! Oh. And now Hank Hill is back. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to power through this a little bit faster. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're we're dragging our way through this. All right, so Austin, played by Patrick Fischler, which he's in everything. The guy that plays the the guy who's gonna buy the house, who apparently works for this camp set company. Yeah. Like, if you look up his uh, resume or whatever, he's in everything. I read a few. He's of like them. the 12th supporting actor in every movie. everything. He, I wrote a few of them down. He's in Lost. Which guy? Uh, his name is Austin. He was the like the banker or the people that the guy that worked for Camp Set that was trying to attain the house from Ali Larder's character. Uh, he was in Mad Men. He was the comedian in Mad Men. Yep. Loved it. Yep. No, I love Mad Men. That's actually the, so. Here's a list of his movies. He was in Lost or TV shows. He was in Lost, Weeds, Mad Men, Pushing Daisies, and Veronica Mars. That's a good. That's a good resume. Like yeah. as far as TV goes, that's like, a lot of like high yeah. budget shows. I've loved literally every single one of those shows. When's he gonna get a headliner, man? He needs a headliner. No, he's doing good. He's got I the white like hair. He's Maybe he much. just doesn't have enough layers. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. Uh, Brian Cranston. Uh, Brian Cranston didn't even have hair. It's like zero layers. Uh, what? Brian Cranston's a. He's. he's <laughs> I know. Not, he's I know. a hero. <laughs> I do love some Brian Cranston. He like had the best like turnaround and move or at least as a career like he was this supporting character for years and years and years power rangers monsters right was he he was power he was two different power rangers monsters <laughs> i didn't know that in the wow. original series <laughs> i would have Brian loved Cranston. to have been a power ranger monster yeah like <laughs> he's yeah he's, he suited up and he power rangered <laughs> i saw i was watching um saving private ryan the other day again he's in that yeah 
Like he's in everything. He just like pops up. Uh, he's done uh, Preparation H commercials. Damn. He did a Tylenol commercial. I think it was Tylenol. It was Tylenol Advil. And like, dude, he's so great. I, I wanted to buy some Tylenol, now. dude. I needed some pain relief, like, like from that dude. <laughs> I want the, like the movies now, because I know I've seen him like everywhere. Uh huh. But now I need to know. Oh, where. Cranston. Yeah, he just did. Yeah. Um, well, he did that Godzilla. He did Godzilla. Oh, uh, he's in that there. He, he's going. Oh, isn't he actually in the Power Rangers movie coming up? He's playing Zordon. Oh, man. He's come full circle. He's closing his loop. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. Word. <laughs> it's like before they were shitting on him. Put this suit on. Get the fuck out there. Just do your, just shut the hell up and do your job. Now, <laughs> like, he's going in there like, I want to be this guy. And this I want to be the head honcho. I want to sell some blue meth to you children. You think he just, like, walked up Rangers. and was like, I'm going to be <laughs> I, 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 Zordon. <laughs> and I'm going to do whatever I want. Rita's <laughs> attacking Earth again. <laughs> oh, you see who's playing Rita? Uh, fuck, I'm going to forget her name. But she was... In the Ghostbusters movie, I want to say. The new one? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't like it? I don't think anybody liked it. Yeah, it was awful. Did you watch it or are you just saying that because you heard it was bad? You're supposing. Both. No, <laughs> one of you fuckers have seen it. I didn't watch it. Hell I know. How are you going to hate on it when no one... I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said nobody liked it. I, Your name is John, too, so I can well, include I'd you in here. I just want to wait till I can see it for free. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that movie. Have you seen it? No. But I want to watch it for free. <laughs> Therefore, it's set. All I just right. love the originals so much. I mean, yeah, they're fine, but I mean, I, I'm all about it. Anyways. 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 So we then see Jacob get into another fight and he defends his sister. Again, he's troubled youth. He's just, that was like a dumb like situation for the movie. Like, yeah. you know, how come no adult in the movies understand a kid is protecting his sister? Like, yeah. This one to me was totally justified. Like if you were going to try and forward the kid's crazy case, he should have just gone like right. level eleven on somebody yeah. for you know something really stupid. Right. Well, yeah. If we if we eventually learn that this kid is so terrible that he has to go to like a crazy home or a prison or wherever the fuck he's coming from in the future, like we're supposing that he's going to be like that. Then yeah, we need to be a little bit worse than like defending his sister. Like he ooh, broke that, his nose. Yeah. Ooh. All he did. Yeah. All he did was break the kid's nose for trying like bullying his right. sister. Like kids. Do what that kid did. Right. <laughs> I mean, I want to see this kid grabbing cats, put them in bags, throwing them into the water. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Like shows. really psychoed yeah. out. Not like I'm defeating my I sister. I want to see some Norman Bait shit, dog. I want to see some mm. weird shit. Some, mm-hmm. some normal bait. Normal bait. Yep. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we go on to Wild Alley Larder's character and Jake are arguing Haley is visited by another spooky man. So again, this kind of continues the, tr- continues the the storyline that they're able to see these ghosts and they're able to like interact with them. So there's no surprise here. There's really nothing going on with that plot wise. Then during a PG sex scene with Ali Larder's character and the Nick guy. Right down. I know, this, was, this was not the scribbler. No. Not this was also not. No. Varsity this should have been scribbled out of this movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we see them do a PG sex scene and while they're, while they're getting the dirty on, um, Jake, the guy that Jake beat up earlier on, uh, comes to the house with those foreshadowed eggs and throws them at the house. And then right as he's about to throw like an actual brick. And well, by the way, did you see he tried to stomp the, the flowers? Yeah. <laughs> he, like, went, yeah. He just goes twice. Yeah. All right. Didn't even hurt him. Like he uh, stepped on him. Nothing happened. They popped right back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, also the kid right before he grabs the brick says, shh, they're sleeping. Yeah. And so he grabs a brick. Like <laughs> you know, that's like literally a- <laughs> the opposite of shh. Yeah, he's like, you're, you're stomping on them flowers too hard. Shh, keep it down over there. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll break something with a brick. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, if you're going to do it, then do it. Well, we have to go. Like, I don't know. I've never been, in, I've never known someone, nor have I ever been the kid who's like done something. So I, I think it's c- kind of terrible to fucking throw a brick through someone's house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who are you? Who That's is some shit kid? you do when somebody's like. It's domestic terrorism. <laughs> yeah. That's a WMA. That's what they did back in the back in the racist days when somebody would move in the yeah. neighborhood. Like, what was that movie with the or basketball remember movie? The, remember the Titans. Yeah. It's a football movie. They were like throwing the bricks <laughs> through Denzel Washington's yeah. windows. That's messed up, man. Yeah, it is messed up. Kids don't do that anymore. Okay, so kids, beat up your friends or beat up people that are bullying you. Don't throw bricks. Don't yeah. throw bricks. Throw eggs. Yeah. I've done that. We've yeah. all done that. I've never thrown an egg at a house. Yeah, I've never no. thrown an egg oh, okay. at a house. You're, you're psychotic. Kids, you, don't do that either. It fucks up the paint. <laughs> like, seriously, it's bad. It does. It messes up everything, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's very does it really expensive. mess up the paint? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
Also, don't take those sugar daddy things and get them real sticky in your mouth and then stick them on cars. No, nah, don't do that. What a sugar daddy be? It's like the caramel it's a caramel cheese. on a stick. I haven't seen one in years. But if sugar. you uh, get one all hot in your mouth and then have can it you on that, a can car. Can you do that movement again? He just showed how yeah, you would yeah. do it. He, do it a little bit slower. Hot in the mouth. <laughs> ah, yeah, it looks hot good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now grab another one and do two of them at the same time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, it will take all the pain off. <laughs> I bet it will. If nothing else, I just learned that John can suck the paint off a, a fucking car. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> um, and then we, uh, oh shit, this is a great scene. Um, so uh, just as they're about to throw the brick through the, through the window, the ghost appears and like scares them off, whatever. So apparently the ghost is like a house dog. Like he's there for house home security. Yeah. Which is confusing again, because at this point we don't know that it's the kid. The right. little girl thinks it's the dad. So now they've all of a sudden sent out all these confused mixed messages of, is it the dad? Is he time traveling back to protect yeah, them or right. something? So they just, you know, mixed messages. Yeah. And so after they, they scares away the bullies, the ghost starts spooking everyone in the house at that point, including the children. And he tries to grab them and burns their arms. Um, and then when they try to run out of the house and run away, they all turn into scribblers and they all get like lines all over them. Yeah. So yeah. It kind of c- c- closes us into the last episode where like everyone gets lines all over them, become scribblers. Yeah, so they all became right. scribblers. Yeah. So they became scribblers and passed out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not as good as the other scribblers. Yeah. No. Um, and then a house doctor comes and uh, to check out the children to make sure the children are okay. But like, again, this is another like paranormal job. Has anyone really ever had a paranormal job? Well, I think it was an immunizol- Oh yeah. He was checking for allergens. Yeah. He wanted to see if they were allergic. I don't know why. Yeah. Why didn't he, they bring the kids to the hospital or to the doctor? Why is the doctor coming to them? Because they couldn't leave. Yeah, every they time they leave. tried to leave, they got like incapacitated. The only shit. one time they tried to leave, right, they, 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 went got, they went scribbler mode. And like, that's the thing I was thinking the whole time I was watching this particular scene. I was like, are they going to try again? Yeah. Well, like, there's no more trial and error. It's first time and done. Yeah. Like, oh, got scribbled. Can't leave. Nope. Nah. Uh, well, even if that okay, so let's just say this movie, whatever they, the, the the doctor didn't come for whatever reason. But in other movies, doctors come to the house all the time. Right, that's a common thing. Is a doctor coming to the house? I've never heard of a doctor coming to a house unless you're like an old, broken down woman, and like the yeah. doctor comes to like. Or like back bed. in the day when they made the house visits with their little right. suitcase and. Yeah, I mean it was a big thing in like you know the twenties and thirties. Mm-hmm. I've heard of it coming back recently, making house calls. House calls. Yeah, there's like house call doctors now. The, the the house calls the doctor. Like you see a big phone coming to the side of the house. Yep. <laughs> the house calls the doctor. I need to hear stat. <laughs> there's somebody inside me puking. I think I've got shingles. <laughs> hey, that's house doctor. Hey, 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 hey. I did it, guys. <laughs> All right. So then um, we get to see their their search engine, and so Ali's character gets on the internet to search, but it's not Google. No, no, no. It's global. Globe? Global. Global? That was her search engine. What a terrible Should have been Huli. Huli. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, they, she, so she globals like how to look up allergies and like, oh, well, no, it's like, is someone, can, can someone be allergic to leaving their home? That's what she yeah. That's the worst Google search Yeah, she ever. searches <laughs> a bunch of stuff. It's like haunting, causing burns. <laughs> can... The ghosts make you not leave your home. It's like a bunch <laughs> yeah. of like real dumb shit. It'd be a very specific search result or nothing at all. Like what the yeah. fuck do you think is ask Jeeves? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just type in your your keywords. Yeah. Uh, and then we see the house buyer come back and again asking her to fucking buy. Take this offer. It's a great deal. Don't tell anyone who gave you this. Was this deal. the time when he came at night? No, 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 that's later when Moving he gets on. killed or Moving whatever. On. <laughs> oh, no, but this same scene is the one where she somehow magic. It's another one of those the radio turns on and it's mm-hmm. magically on the plot point. So that's the point shortly after that where the laundry demon comes out and scares the shit out of everyone. She gets locked in the laundry room with this little demon and she's like kicking and screaming. So she finally gets out. The boyfriend hears her screaming from outside. He comes rushing in the house and he gets a chance to see the demon. So this is where we're at least able to pass along data to the viewer that everyone now knows about demons. Yeah. So that's good. Like, yeah. I, I hate when movies are like, don't tell, or like only one person knows about something and they have to continuously hide it. It's like, if I was in a world living and there was like a demon in my house, I'd be telling everyone. Yeah, no, if there was a demon coming into my house, I would literally be telling everyone I know. I'd be on Facebook, I'd be on 
the Instagrams. I'd be selfieing with the demons. Yeah, yeah. No one be send in know. demon Snapchats. Yeah, demon chat. It's a thing. I've, it's an app I've been creating. You know. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's heard about it. It's going to be a big thing. It's 40 years in the future. Everyone's going to be having this. Don't worry about it. I've yeah. been so yeah, everyone learns about it and he's like, oh my God, I have to have this secret meetup in the middle of a parking lot with some stranger who happens to work for the same company that is the company that's sending people back from the future. Right. Oh my God, everything's connected in this yeah. movie. That he used to also work right. for. Right. It's so, it's so stupid. Yeah. Everything's too connected. Well, what was funny to me too is like after he sees what happens, of course, he they go through this little rigmarole where he's like, does the flash of light happen every time it comes and goes? And they're oh like, God. yeah, the flash of light happens. And then he's like, is there like time displacement floating stuff? Yeah, that totally happens too. Are you what horny? Happen- yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happens with your electronics? They go crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh my God. That signifies a change in energy. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Does one come out Whoa. of a dryer machine? Yes, they do come out of dryer machines. Oh. <laughs> So, anyway, so yeah, he meets up with someone, gets a bunch of different electric gear from the same company he used to work for, which, again, was called Camset. And he comes back to the house, does all that shit we just talked about, and he, his goal is to measure all this paranormal activity that's happening. And so they have it all set up, and they start playing Monopoly, and we find out that the ghost doesn't like Monopoly, because no. as the kid rolls the dice, he picks it up, he's like, no. You're not getting snake eyes today. You're going straight to jail. You've had your third doubles in a row. Fuck your eight, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so he starts also, the ghost starts messing with the microwave, which is like, I don't know, like, they're trying to show how spooky this ghost is. And he's like, open close, open close. (laughs) The DVD players, (laughs) (laughs) sometimes my shit just does that, dog. Yeah, yeah. In, out, in, out. (laughs) Yeah, the ghost is just really not good with technology. He doesn't understand devices. Yeah, he's having a hard time with the remote. (laughs) It's like my dad. How do you... How do you do this thing? Is your dad a ghost? (laughs) Oh, my God. No, you just can't figure out the DVD player. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so they capture... The, so okay, so the demon is then they run upstairs after the, the demon starts like messing with all the different electronics, and as they're trying to close the door, this little ghost demon spirit, whatever it is, puts his fingers in between the door, like as it's closing, and it disappears, but it chops off his fingers. Got so that finger. So that's where we learn there is some corporealness to these spirits, demons, whatever they are, and they actually like pick it up at one point in time. That's gross. And, uh, and it was like just like it wasn't accurate, especially fingers, but it was like little sausages. It was yeah. Kinda, it was kind of weird. It was. I was like, I think that I don't think that's his finger. It didn't look like a finger. And the guy was like smelling it. He started putting his butt. It was weird. Right. I never understood that. Every time. <laughs> yeah. L- the lube. <laughs> he starts treating it like a sugar daddy. Um, <laughs> Sticking it to cars and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so then while watching back over the film, capturing the ghosts or the demons or whatever, Madison realizes that Nick works for the same company. So that's that plot point starts coming in. And so she's like, get out of here. I know that you work for them. So she thinks like it's some kind of long con to get to know her. But he's like, no, I just happen to be conveniently plot pointed to <laughs> make sense in the story. Right? Yeah. But she sees that like the demon dude's T-shirt just happens to have you know, that company's right. logo on it or whatever. Because <laughs> um, demons wear t-shirts. Right. I mean, I know I do. If I ever, like, die and come back, I'm, I'm, I'm at least wearing Vans. Why did, yeah. Why I'm at least grab my favorite team. Why did put a company shirt on this dude? They were just going to send it back in the future or whatever? <laughs> yeah. If you're doing time crimes, you need at least, like, like hide branding. Right. Like, why? You, oh, come on, man. Don't waste a company shirt on this piece of shit. <laughs> or try to frame someone <laughs> out. Put McDonald's on there and they'll shut down McDonald's or something. Right. Do some good for the world, people. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's where we learned that the ghost is actually a prisoner from 40 years in the future. We've already spoiled this for you guys. And so that explains, again, why Cam, this is when the Cam cast or Cam set guy comes back trying to buy the house again for the third time where he dies. He gets, like, attacked by the... And he came out in the middle of the night. Right? Yeah, he, yeah, middle of the night, the guy comes like, by. He's like, I have the contract. Yeah. And she's like, I, well, first of all, he's like, I have the contract, even though we've never agreed to this terms of this. Like, right. at no point in time was she like, okay, you come back tonight. Oh, what do you think? Like, 10 o'clock? 11 yeah. o'clock? Swing back by? That's good. Let me come back when you're asleep. <laughs> yeah. Does this dude ever not work? Right, no, he's... He, he, he's he been a company man for at least three, four years. He's really yeah. going for that final six years. He's a man. He's, he's trying to get closer. fully vested. He's a closer. Dude's yeah. a fucking <laughs> closer. Uh, so anyways, yeah, after Sketchy Dude gets killed by the ghost, it's just straight on carnage in the house. Yeah. And this, even though it's probably the most exciting part of the movie, this is where I started tuning out because I'm already just over it. I'm like, I'm done with this movie. So I'm going to have someone else fill in the last 10 minutes of this movie. It's for plot me. spaghetti, dog. Yeah. I think, what, I about think, mom, what about mom spaghetti? Uh, palm sweaty. Knees weak. Uh, so happy. It was on my sweater already, I think. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, sorry. Go mom ahead. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think John's got to do this one. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just straight up carnage. They prepare all zombie style for the dude to come back again. So they have like boards, really with saw blades, weapons. and that they they got never, medieval on that they that. never <laughs> use. <laughs> they make all these weapons, and the only one that they use, I think, is like the stick with the knives taped to it and stuff. I don't know. They totally but, went like Pinterest weapons on this shit. <laughs> they like monstrosity <laughs> weapons. <laughs> they screwed like <laughs> saw blades into a board. They got knives on the end of a stick. I don't know where they got any of this. This shit. one goes good with a beard paired with a nice red wine, right? Well, this is realistically how the zombie apocalypse is going to happen. Because all the white girls are going to be on Pinterest. How do we make zombie weapons? Oh, that one looks <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. We just alienated our entire white girl audience, <laughs> which I don't think exists. No. no. Um, yeah. So the guy comes back. They fight him all crappily because somehow he's super strong and can't, mm-hmm. you know, be knocked down. What the what's his name? The guy like runs into him and he just floors him, you know, right. like I don't know, a bunch of dumb stuff. He beats the crap out of the guy, he stabs the mom. They you gotta all... remember though, this big dude broke a kid's nose. Damn son. when he was a kid. When he was a kid. Man. He's troubled youth. He's got the troubled youth. Strength. He was a big dude though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he grows was up. huge. That kid just shoots up in high school. <laughs> yeah. Like that gross spurt, man. seven what inches that ninth grade <laughs> it's the year. Protein in the KFC chicken. You got some weight yeah. in that. It's the it's all the nutrients in the M- Michelle Obama lunches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The show's Michelle Obama's future. no child left behind, fam. And, was, <laughs> and he definitely wasn't left behind. Nah. He was he was put behind by time, displaced. <laughs> oh, yeah. So while the the contract guy is getting after he gets his face pummeled, he crawls back out the door, you know, and he's crying into his cell phone like a little bitch, and the cops come. Mm. And the cops come so and they're like, "What's going on here?" And they're like, "There's a guy out back trying to kill us." And of course, he's, you he's know, not there. gone. He's not yeah. there. He poofed. I can't. I can't remember the cop. The first cop gets killed somehow, and then uh, the, the boyfriend the gets thrown into the second cop who's standing on the stairway, and they go down into the basement, and he smashes the you know cop's face, and then he has his little flashback where he's like. I remember my volcano and then cuts his, you know, and then stabs the mom again and then cuts his own face. And then the boyfriend shoots him like four times. That's it. That's pretty much yeah, it. Uh, that's pretty much. And it then, was a rush. Uh, no, there's, there's another detail. It's like, I was expecting this part to be like, there to be like 30 minutes left in the movie. You know, this is another one where, um, like the pack where there was just all this like middle space where a bunch of crap happened. And then it's finally started getting interesting and the movie was over. Yeah. They should have picked um, a little better. Because, oh God, this scene was so poorly acted because I had no idea what was going on until it actually happened. The mom's like laying there all bleeding and stuff. And they're like, stay, mom, stay. And I'm just like, where the fuck is she going to go? Right. No. Like, what's going to happen? Is she <laughs> going to die? Is that where she's going? And they're like, stay with us, mom, stay. She's going to the I'm light. like, what is happening? And she like crawls over to the body of the dude and like s- s- snuggles him. And they teleport back to the future. And really, Doc Brown is there. Yeah, and Marty's Doc there. Brown is there, and, and Marty's the family, there, and the Teletubbies are all there, <laughs> <laughs> and they're all hopping around all gaily. Like, uh, <laughs> no, the sun turns into a little child's face. I'm yeah, scared. why? Yeah, um, no. She goes back to the future, and you just see all these weird flashes of weird medical people, and nothing happens. It's not scary. And then they're all like, you know, the kids standing there looking down at the blood stains on the floor. All, Ooh, mom's gone. And they go to walk out of the basement, and she reappears, looking futuristic. Oh my god! And that's it. Really? That's it. That's the end. Wow. It was okay. the worst. Yeah. No. That's. I, I would say that is a big letdown of an ending because. Unless they're like setting up a, a sequel, but I mean, I wouldn't watch it. I don't know. I'm probably, gonna pass on the sequel. I'll be honest. I'll probably watch it. I'll watch anything. I, I literally will watch anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Canon will watch anything. Well, all right. Well, that's that then. Um, well, shit. That's a very disappointing ending. I'm kind of glad I tuned out then. So, are we giving this a good, bad, a what now, or a hidden gem? Uh, I'll, I'll hold my reservations. You guys go. Uh, this is bad. It's just straight bad for you. It was plot spaghetti, man. I couldn't keep up with any of it. Okay. All right. Other John? (sighs) I wish it was a what now because the concept could have been really cool. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of other movies that did the same thing that this movie did, but way better. Yeah. You know, this was another one where this movie had potential and could have done a lot of good stuff that 
you know, this movie was trying to recreate stuff that other movies had already done better. Gotcha. Um, so but bad. no, it just ended up being all bad. Yeah, I, it started off being a potential hidden gem. I was watching it. The production was great. The acting was at least decent. The plot was kind of cool. I liked the fact that it was being time traveling, so that's already got my attention. But when it was all said and done with, even though it had uh, aspects of movies that I like, it ultimately came down to being bad because it just didn't keep my attention. Like, you think the third act, the climax of the movie, you're going to really be invested, but I literally couldn't handle it anymore. Had the chick from Heroes in it and everything. Yeah, man. Had everything going for Yeah, it. I mean, I had to try really hard to pay attention. And, like, so, I don't know how much money they spent on this movie, but you could tell that they they dropped some dime on it. It all went in the screen, guys. We yeah, all saw it did. That. You could see the production value, but it just wasn't done. I all. mean, honestly, like, the makeup was pretty great. Yeah, I thought I thought the makeup was pretty on point because those were some nasty looking dudes. Yeah, you know that's true. The the yeah, floor crawly nasty guy. I mean, he was very Dude convincing came out of the looking. I yeah, mean, you don't just yeah. see that anyway. I think that if they had explained the time travel stuff earlier on and kind of expanded upon that, it could have been a good movie. I think they had too much there, like to digest in an hour and a half. They did. They right. introduced all these things. They were like. This happened, and uh-huh. this happened, and this ties into this, but they didn't give you like how that worked. And there right. was also way too much coincidence going on. Yeah, yeah, they did a lot of like very matter of fact telling and not very mm-hmm. much connecting and showing. Yeah, they buried the lead on the time travel. I guess if they could have gotten to that plot point sooner, maybe this movie could have been saved. But then I think it would have been all time travel. Like it would have been. Well, I'm okay with that. Yeah, uh, it would have been a different movie. Yeah. Yeah, not necessarily a bad thing because it was could a have great been movie. a better movie. <laughs> now, do you think when she transform or transported back to the future, she had sex with her son? You think it would happen? What I hope think? so. Mm. I like to think so. Actually, mm. somebody in North Carolina was just she looked arrested all cleaned for up that. though. So really? She must not traveling to the somebody. future. Oh, <laughs> but somebody in North Carolina was just recently arrested for uh, having the boinking, family sex, boinking with her son. I mean, that's already a little son boink in little West boink. Virginia, like fifty billion times, right? All right, well, that ends another episode of Netflix where we all <laughs> say it's bad. So I hope you guys had a chance to watch this. Actually, I don't hope you had a chance to watch it. I yeah, hope you guys no, did not watch it. this and saved your time. Um, next week, we're going to hit another horror movie probably because those are a little bit more fun to talk about. If you guys have any suggestions of movies that we can talk about or you think we would enjoy on Netflix, go ahead and send this to us at our newsletter at www.lastchancepodcastnetwork.com. And uh, if you guys know people that would be interested in a podcast that is about Netflix movies, go ahead and tell them. It's really important to spread the word on this and get listenership up. And as always, I've been Cannon. John. And other John. Y'all take care. This has been a Last Chance Podcast production brought to you by the Last Chance Podcast Network.